Welcome everybody. I'm going to begin with a quote from Daniel Kahneman. Kahneman is a psychologist known for his work in value judgment and decision making and he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2002 for his work in economic science. We think, each of us, that we're much more rational than we are. And we think that we make our decisions because we have a good reason to make them. Even when it's the other way around. We believe in the reasons because we've already made the decision. And this is one of the main challenges we have in integrating ecosystem services into decision making. You've heard a lot about the methods to map and assess ecosystem services. However, it's important to know that the information we give to the decision maker is usually the information is going to influence what he's going to take as a decision. And so we need to know exactly what kind of information we can produce to have him taking this decision. You see here a decision support system. It's a participatory planning process which has been done in Switzerland and you see on this screen, you see many different kinds of information. You see ecosystem services formulated as figures, as graph, but you also see 3D visualization. This participatory planning process was done to help the people define where to put their building zones. And they can assess the impact of their building zones distribution on ecosystem services. Importantly, what you can see is that we don't only have information about the figures and the data, but also on the visual change, the scenery is changing. And this is extremely important to formulate or to give a proxy for changes in cultural ecosystem services. Designing such a platform is, however, really difficult. And in the following, I would like to give you the four main challenges to try to design such a platform. The first one is based on what Elinor Ostrom, another, uh, um, another uh, Nobel Prize uh, winner, which won the Nobel Prize in 2006, also in economic science, said there's not one solution to designing such decision support system, but there are many. And why are there many? Because these decision supports are linked into the local context, in the, to the social and ecological local context. So what she said is that you need to define, like a doctor, you need to diagnose your system with different categories to be able to provide the right information for these decision makers. And what is the right information? It's the information where the stakeholders have the power to change the decisions they can change. This means for us that the stakeholders in this process need to have the power to change the ecosystem services they are interested in. And for that we need four categories. The one is we need to define what are the resources the stakeholder is interested in. Is it forest? Is it water? And then we need to define what kind of units can the decision maker understand. Is it microgram per liter? What is it? You've learned many different units in the last lectures and here you need to select one which makes the decision maker help him take the right decision. Then we need to define who are the users of this decision making support. And finally you need to know how the stakeholders can have an influence, what's the governance system behind it to help the decision maker make the decision. So what is its power to change the system? So this is typical for these ecosystem services uh, systems because they are really complex system linking the biophysical and the economic and the social part of this uh, social ecological system as we call it. These four categories are thus going to be really different depending on the decision problem. And you see here in that slide that depending on at which tier we are, at which complexity we are, we're going to have to have other variables in this system. For example, if we look at recreation, recreation for a city planners, we need to understand how this recreation area, it, what kind of elements do we have in this recreation area? Do the people use this recreation area? How many people go there? However, if we look at a 
larger tier, at the more complex, at the higher uh, level, we might wonder what is the green area needed for these people. And it's not about the elements in this area which becomes important. Understanding these tiers is what we have developed in the frame of the H2020. It's an, a project called Esmeralda, where we try to provide a decision tree or a decision information how to select these different tiers, which you see here on the right. Different question guiding you to help you select the tiers. And you see at the bottom that there's a, there's a range of different methods you can choose to try to get this information for the decision maker. And you see that these methods overlap. And this overlapping of methods is really important because many of these methods can be used at different tier levels. The second big challenge is a challenge a lot of geographers have already uh, heard about. It's the modifiable area unit problem. And you see here two maps which were mapped at different scales, one at a smaller scale and one at a larger scale. And what's interesting is that you lose certain categories, certain land use categories, when you map at a larger scale. You see here that you might lose very important categories which have a big value for providing ecosystem services. So again, you need to understand what is the challenge of the stakeholders. What do they want to know to know what kind of scale you can choose to assess your ecosystem services? The third challenge is a challenge which is linked to the methodology and also the parameters you're using. You've heard all these different models and these models are usually inherently laden with uncertainties. All the parameters themselves have uncertainties, the link between the parameters have uncertainties, the decision, the decision of taking certain parameters in the model is, uh, is laden with uncertainty. And the product is also going to be laden with uncertainty. You can see here on the right side the same ecosystem services mapped with different parameters in the same social ecological context and you see that the trade-offs are different. So when you try to formulate certain information for the decision making, you need to know exactly what kind of information you are giving to the decision maker and you need to tell him what is the uncertainty with this information. And there are many approaches to address this. One of them is Bayesian network, which allows to propagate this uncertainty and to give it to the decision maker when you assess ecosystem services. You see an output of that on the left side. It's a map of a forest area in a mountain area in Switzerland. And you see that the uncertainties are the areas in the figure which are darker. And you see, interestingly, that these uncertainties are at the tree line. Why at the tree line? At the tree line, because at this location, we have more uncertainty. We don't know exactly what is the process. What is going to happen with the forest under climate change and under different subsidy systems we have at the European level? And so the value of the ecosystem service there is laden with uncertainty. And this information provides them with knowledge about where to, it's possible to take action without having to bother about uncertainties and where you have a lot of uncertainties. Finally, we've said at the beginning, it's really important that the information we provide to the stakeholders is understandable. And there's a lot of uh, studies which have shown that if the stakeholders understand the knowledge, have the knowledge or understand the information and also trust the information, because they understand the uncertainty, that they are more willing to take actions. And so it's really important that the platform you're designing really addresses these information, addresses the needs of the stakeholders. And this platform you see here is again is a platform for supporting spatial planners in their decision about the distribution of building zones in the Valais in Switzerland. And what was really interesting when we discuss this with these uh, stakeholders is that not only their knowledge increased but also the mutual understanding of what the other people was knowing about the socio-ecological system. And this mutual learning is extremely important to foster actions for fostering the provision of the ecosystem services needed by society.